You know how all of us YouTubers are always telling you to go build projects and actually apply what you're learning? Well, if you've actually tried to do this, so if you Googled something like programming projects to build, you may have noticed there's an overwhelming amount of projects that you can actually build, which leads you to that next dilemma, which is, okay, which one should I build? Or why should I build this one over that one? And it's critical that you answer this question correctly, otherwise you're gonna waste a lot of time. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the three different types of projects that you're gonna to wanna to build to put yourself in the driver's seat to get hired. I'm gonna go over the exact types of projects and why they're important with examples so you don't have that excuse of, oh, I don't know what to build or something like that. So without any further ado, let's dive in. So diving right in here, the three types of projects are really three levels of projects. And I'm gonna explain why each is important. The first level of projects that you're gonna to wanna to work on are what I call simple projects. By the way, the term simple does not mean easy. For some of you, these projects might be very challenging. Some good examples that would fit in the simple category of projects would be something like a digital clock app, right? You literally just show the time and you show the seconds, so you have to change every second. Maybe it would be something like a to-do app, we all know about that, where you can add to-dos and cross them off. Or an expense tracker, where you can simply have a user add in expenses and show them in a table. Projects that fit this category are typically, not always, but typically either low in complexity, meaning they do just one, two, maybe three things. They are usually less than 200 lines of code. Sometimes they may be more, but usually they're less. They're pretty small applications. And also they shouldn't use any libraries or frameworks. In other words, you really wanna focus on the fundamentals. You wanna focus on syntax and problem solving. This first level of projects is crucial to developing real programming skills and real foundation. So yes, you're going to learn about syntax. You're gonna apply a lot of what you're learning. You're gonna learn about control flow statements. More important than that, you're going to learn how to problem solve, right? So you're gonna learn how to take a problem, like building a project, you're gonna break it down into smaller parts, work through each part, and when something doesn't work, you have to go back and debug and analyze your code. And that's what really makes a programmer a programmer, and that's where you're really gonna get out of the first level projects. I generally recommend building anywhere from four to eight projects at this level, and by the way, don't overdo this. Like don't add tons of really cool features. Don't spend tons of time making this look amazing. Just do the bare minimum to call this complete. And by the way, I will leave a link in the description of all different examples of projects types for each of these levels. So definitely check that out. Now, one of the simplest projects that you could actually take up right now actually doesn't even require coding. It does, however, require that you go down below here and smash the subscribe button. Now, this won't actually make you a programmer, but you could try putting it on your resume and seeing how that goes. Okay, so on to the level two projects, which I like to call the intermediate level of projects. Now, the key thing about this level of projects is that we're really increasing the complexity level. Some examples of projects that come to mind that could be categorized as intermediate are a lot of video games, actually. So Space Invaders, you've got Snake Game, Tetris game, which is really challenging. And then also something like Pong would be pretty challenging as well. Beyond games, there's something like the calculator app, which seems simple, but for a lot of people, it's really a definitely a step up in complexity, down to something like a web scraper, where you scrape Craigslist, let's say, and maybe send yourself an email once a day with all of the available apartment listings. As far as what actually defines an intermediate project, I'll be honest with you, this is sometimes it's very hard to figure out. You know, you may build a project and it'll be in that blurry line between the two, but there are some basic qualities or rules of thumb that I find for level two projects. The first thing I found is that they typically do five or more things. So if you look at the Tetris app, there's a lot of things going on there, right? Like there are a lot of different things that you actually have to do as a programmer. Same with the calculator. There are a lot of different functions of it. And usually if they do five or more, that's a good sign. Now the next thing, as far as lines of code, actually the general rule is that it typically doesn't go over 500 lines of code. So I actually don't think there's a good gauge here as well, but just don't go over because usually if it goes over, you might start bleeding into that next level, which is a level three project. The last rule of thumb here is that you'll have a minimal use of libraries or frameworks. So you may use one or two to help you with certain things, but you still wanna work along the fundamentals and really work on handling all the complexity. Now, how many intermediate projects should you actually build? So I typically recommend building a minimum of three, but if you find that you're going through these pretty easily, maybe step it up a little bit and go with something like four, five, or six. Just remember that the reason you're building these projects is to move into a higher level of complexity so that when you get into some of the more complex apps, you're a little more comfortable. So for those of you who can, more practice may be better. 
So on to the last level of projects here, which is really the top level of projects, which I like to call the capstone projects. Capstone projects really put everything together and have a very high level of complexity. So applications like a social media clone, right? So a LinkedIn clone, a Twitter clone, a Facebook clone, a uh, Instagram clone, or even something like a Slack clone, like a chat app, like a real time chat app or a Discord clone, or even something like a fake e-commerce store. So just build an e-commerce store, sell fake stuff. You wouldn't actually sell anything, but you get the basic idea. These types of projects should put your skills to the test. And most importantly, they should give you real examples that you can bring up in an interview that you actually can do the work that, hey, this is how you know that if I come in, I can actually do the work that's expected of me. To me, if you put a capstone project together, you're likely worthy of getting hired by somebody out there. What makes a capstone project a capstone project? Well, there is no perfect definition for this, but there are some general rules of thumb that you can follow. The first thing is that they usually do 10 or more things. Now, if you think of one of the examples I brought up, like a Twitter clone, think of all the things that application actually does, right? So there's a registration process, there's a login process, there's viewing all of the tweets on your timeline, there's posting new tweets, there's sending direct messages, there's retweeting, there is liking, there's quote tweeting. I mean, we could just kind of go on here. I would say as long as it does 10 or more things, that's usually a good sign. Another good rule of thumb for capstone projects is that you use integrations. So it basically means different systems outside of your project, right? So if you're using like a front end and a back end and your website and your application, maybe you use a database, right? That would be considered an integration or maybe you use an external API or maybe even some external software that's running on that server, on that back end server. Those are all integrations and they definitely would add to the complexity. The next rule of thumb is that you should use multiple libraries and frameworks, right? So frameworks and libraries help you to do what you do as a programmer. So you're not focusing so much on fundamentals, but you're more focusing on how to use these libraries in real world projects. Another typical sign of a capstone project is that they are more than 500 lines of code because they're more complex. And lastly, and this is my advice here, is that your capstone project should be interesting, right? So what I mean by that is you're gonna put this on your resume and your personal portfolio site. You wanna grab a little bit of attention. And I know this term interesting is subjective, but just basically if you were to tell your friend, your mom, your whatever relative at Thanksgiving dinner that you built this project, they would go, oh, that's kinda of cool, that's interesting. That's all you're aiming for. Now, one thing I want you to notice here is that this pyramid of projects, this section here is the smallest one compared to the other two because these projects will take the most time out of all the projects that you're gonna build. So you just can't build that many of them. So what I typically recommend is that you build anywhere from at least one to maybe three projects with two being the absolute sweet spot. At the end of the day, I've seen people get hired with just a single capstone project, but what you may wanna try is build one, test the waters, go out and apply, and if it doesn't really work out, then go ahead and try to build a second one. I've based a lot of what I just laid out here from working with many people in my mentorship program. And in that program, I've worked with a lot of different people to help change their careers, everything from cooks to musicians to delivery drivers to help them land their first gig as a developer. And while I wanna make it absolutely clear that this program is not for everybody, if you are committed to making this career change and you do wanna inquire about my mentorship program, I will leave a link in the description below of how you can do that. Just keep in mind that I vet every single person who comes in the program, so you will have to do a free intake call to see if it's a good fit. So other than that, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching and peace out everybody.